So then beyond that stage, beyond that stage, in order to figure out what's beyond that stage, we have to look at like pattern of reaction. Notice that the pattern of reaction is the same. Someone yells at you, you yell back, or you're, then you notice you're inclined to yell back, then you notice that you're angry, that gave rise to, to the inclination to yell back, and then you notice the thoughts, you know, why is this person get, uh, yelling at me, this person's getting me angry, and then you, then you notice the choice, the ability to choose to change that. And the same thing in the brain, that is the development of the reaction where the brainstem gets the signal, then the amygdala and the limbic system, and the amygdala can flood your body with hormones in the fight or flight reaction um, if someone you know, suddenly jumps out and says boo, uh, or, or you face some other really scary situation. Um, but beyond the amygdala, if you allow the, the reaction to progress upward, then the the cortex gets the signal next and then the prefrontal cortex and that's when we have the capacity to choose to change the reaction and also in the development of in evolution the development of the brain and the development uh, development of the brain in, in an individual human being we also see that the brain stem develops first the more instinctual parts of the brain um, the reptilian parts of the brain because that the reptile basically reptiles basically have just a brain stem and then we get to the limbic system and then we get more group orientedness. You notice that reptiles aren't as group oriented. If if uh, if an individual strays from the group, then the group doesn't usually defend the individual the way that you would see in mammals, for example, um, because there isn't that belonging to the group as much um, because their fixation is is more fully on the first stage, and in in that sense. Um, and so then we see the uh, the limbic system developing and we see more group orientedness in evolution and in the individual and then we see the cortex capacity for thought and then we have the prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed in a human being it's the last part of the brain to develop it's not fully developed in a human being until the mid 20s until about uh about 25 and so that fits the pattern where we have 0 to 7 of the first stage 7 to 14 adolescence second stage and 14 to 21, where we start to recognize the uh, existence of individual other eyes. And then we get to, to after 21, where the prefrontal cortex is more fully developing and we have the capacity for choice. And so ultimately, if you notice, after that reaction develops all the way up, if we're looking at someone you know, yelling at you and you're getting angry and then you notice the thoughts and then you notice the choice, the capacity to choose to change those thoughts, which then would create different feelings, which would create different instincts or inclinations to say different things or do different things. And then you might say or do different things and then you have a different manifestation of the physical world. And notice that that's in the reverse order of the development of all things. And so we see that creation is in the reverse order of development. We choose what we think, what we think causes what we feel, what we feel causes what we're inclined to say and do, which leads to what we actually say and do, which leads to what manifests in our physical lives, which again is in the reverse order of first there's the baby, or first there's something, then we have the instinctual stages, again present, and self-preservation, and, and so on, and then we have the feeling stages where we have past, and belonging, and so on, and then we have the thought stages where we have future, and connecting and so on and so then we have choice and um, just a hint of other things in uh, in the book and and in the nature of the universe uh, we have the manifestation of this paradigm in several forms and including in several forms of personality and so different aspects of different of, of personality are actually fixations on these different stages just as everything else in the world ultimately is and the book goes into depth about various uh, different manifestations of this paradigm in the world around us, in the physical forces of the universe, in the fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong weak nuclear forces. It looks at other forms of its manifestation in evolution, in, uh, in personality, in extensive aspects of personality, because ultimately these are, like I said, fixations on different stages. And, and we can see asexual reproduction, where there are others out there, and their genetic projections, physical projections of the self in the second stage, uh, multiple cells all with the same DNA. And then we get the sexual reproduction where we're connecting with an individual other eye and we see the third stage. And so there are several manifestations of this. And I go into depth about this in the book. 
and um, and we can see different um, different things that that are ultimately all manifestations of the same paradigm. The whole world is a holographic manifestation. Every part contains information about the whole. That's in that sense, it's holographic. The whole world is a holographic manifestation of this paradigm on every level and scale of existence. Where where this is the the paradigm. I mean, this is just the beginning of it that I've pointed out here. It's more fully developed in the book, but this is the paradigm. This is this is us getting a grasp of that paradigm. That is the way by which we relate to the source of existence, the way by which we define the world in which we exist, and that and the way by which the entire world develops and everything in the world develops, and then fixates on a certain stage, manifests at that stage in some physical or personality or somewhat or some other form, and and so. Uh, it's a quite comprehensive grasp of the world, and it's it's a uh, it's a pretty interesting way to view people and the world around us. But ultimately, this is this is the DNA of the world. This is the structure, the paradigmatic structure that dictates the development of everything. And through the manifestation of everything, we can see this, uh, we can glean this from it. And so, uh, so if you're interested in anything that I've said here, uh, you're welcome to buy the book. Uh, it goes into much more depth, like I said, about all of this. So I hope you enjoyed, and and hopefully I will see more books coming out like this. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing, and you're welcome to, to buy. All right, uh, be well, and have a good day.